All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we have to talk about the tropics overall out there because there is still a lot of potential tropical cyclones out there that we need to talk about. Now, before I get into things, I did want to mention that we do have our most recent winter forecast up and available for you guys to watch. So on the top right corner, I'm going to leave a link to that. We will reveal what's underneath these question marks in our overall forecast in that video, but we will also be going over our precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, and our snowfall forecast within that video. So be sure to check that out. Again, top right corner of your screen. Check it out today. Before I get into things, also I would ask that you like the video, comment, and subscribe. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, now that Ida is all said and done, do you think it will go down as the most major hurricane of the entire hurricane season? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video. We're taking a look at the overall Atlantic, our five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. You can see Ida is still out there. We do have a disturbance offshore of the East Coast. I'm not really counting that one because you'll see in a minute, but it has a 0% chance of development over the next two days and a 0% chance of development over the next five days. So I don't know why it's there. We also have Tropical Depression 10, and then we also have an area there near the Caribbean and one in our main development region. That is our biggest threat at this point moving forward. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that cone forecast for Ida because even though it's not a category four hurricane anymore and it's only a tropical storm, there's still impacts expected along the United States here in the Eastern United States, Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama, Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, D.C., Pennsylvania, Delmarva. This one is going to make itself known, and it could even impact uh, the New England states around where we had that um, hurricane and tropical storm hit. I forget which one that was, um, but that was just a few weeks ago. And they could be impacted by another tropical system coming up soon here in Ida. Unfortunately, it seems like Ida was far worse than expected by anybody, even myself, uh, I'm choosing not really to talk about it too much because no official information for the most part has really been released. So we're going to wait a while to address that until every, every fact is known. I hope everybody understands that, but it was devastating. Uh, and I obviously feel terrible about that entire situation. Let's take a look at our overall Atlantic hurricane season so far, by the way, we have Anna in May, uh, Bill, Claudette and Danny, as well as Elsa in June. Elsa lasted all the way to July, but that was the last tropical system we would see for all of July, even though it didn't even start in July. And then for August, as you can see, Fred, Tropical Storm twice, Grace, Category 3, Henry, Category 1. Uh, and then we had Ida, obviously, late August. We had Tropical Depression 10 and Tropical Storm Julian for a while there. I'm not exactly sure. I was so focused on Ida, I don't even know which one became Julian for a while, but Clearly, there is no Julian any, anymore, so I don't really know which one ended up. I'm guessing it's 10 that was that was Julian for a little while, um, but it's hard to tell. I don't know where Julian went to, but anyway, that is our entire Atlantic season so far. Uh, do you think we're going to close out with an above-average season or below-average season? I'd be curious to see what you guys think also. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at some of these other systems, like the one offshore of the East Coast, which, again, I've already spoiled it and told you guys it has a 0% chance of development. We're going to go over that one in the Caribbean, the Southern Caribbean as well, and then also our main development region one. And then we're just going to start talking about the probability of tropical depression, tropical storm, and hurricane. Um, we're even going to go over um, some of the sea surface temperatures and things of that nature for the overall hurricane season. Now here's that one offshore of the East Coast, again, 0% chance on both the two-day and the five-day outlook. Not really worth mentioning at this point unless it's going to actually go up in percentage because at a 0% chance, that means it will not develop, obviously. 10% means it probably won't, you know, really, really probably won't, but 0% uh, is really it won't. Five-day graphical tropical weather outlook here for our Gulf and Caribbean system. We have a 20% chance of this one developing over the next five days. And do I think it will happen? Obviously, at a 20% chance, and from what I've seen, it looks more like a 50-50 shot, but at this point, it's hard to tell. This is a very concerning area to see this one developing, because it is kind of similar to Ida, There's that area that is very favorable right now. Well, the good news is, is with all these tropical systems that have come through, if there is any good news, including Ida, is that they do cool down the waters, and when they cool down the waters, it kind of uh, lessens the chance of a storm as bad the next time around. So it usually... Um, it eats up a lot of the good conditions uh, behind it and then doesn't leave as much opportunity for the next storm 
uh, that comes through. So that is the only good thing that really comes from these. Here is our main development region system. And again, this is the highest chance system at this point. This is the one I'm most worried about at this point. And it has an 80% chance of development over the next five days. And it's still over Africa. So obviously, an interesting situation there. We're going to have to see what this one does and where it heads. Because if it's just going to head towards the middle of the Atlantic, I think that would be a good sigh of relief. But if it's heading more towards the Caribbean and the east coast of the United States, we're going to watch this one extremely closely. Now, here's the probability of tropical depression. Obviously, Ida is going to ex is at least expected to be still remain a tropical depression throughout its pretty much its entire trek through the United States. So that's why it has a 90 to 100 percent chance. Our Gulf and Caribbean system at this point has a 80 to 90 percent chance here on this model. Again, I said about a 50 50 shot. Uh, the National Hurricane Center is saying about a 20 percent shot, and this model is saying an 80 percent shot. Very very interesting there. Uh, our one in the middle of the Caribbean only has a, or sorry, in the middle of the Atlantic only has a 40 to 50% shot. Uh, but our main development region one all obviously has a 90 to 100% chance. Once we look at the probability of tropical storm, interesting to note, we do have a 40 to 50% chance there with Ida regaining that tropical, or sorry, tropical storm status offshore of the East Coast. That is going to be something we need to watch as well. But an, a 90 to 100% chance with this main development region one over the next three days. Probability of hurricane, 40 to 50% chance over the next three days with this one. This one, according to this model, could rapidly intensify. And then when we look at September 3rd to 6th, we have about a 70 to 80% chance of hurricane status with this one. The good news is, is it begins to take it in a direction that typically means it's not going to impact much land whatsoever. We can only hope, of course. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is move on and start talking about sea surface temperatures. All right, now here we are taking a look at these sea surface temperatures across the entire globe, basically, and we can see that there's a lot of things going on. We see our La Nina there. That's basically the only area with cold water in the uh, Pacific Ocean. That is our La Nina. Uh, it is still extremely weak, basically a neutral ENSO at this point, which means it's somewhere in between an El Nino and a La Nina. It has not really distinguished itself yet. It is not really... Uh, strengthened into what I would typically consider a true La Nina. So we're going to need to watch and see if it's going to do it. The Atlantic overall is very warm, but the good news is, is the areas that aren't warm are the areas where typically tropical systems move through. So let's go ahead and just zoom into the North Atlantic here. Caribbean and our main development region are both dealing with some slightly than slightly cooler than normal waters. That is extremely good news at this point. If we were dealing with the dark reds, we would be on high alert for some very strong tropical systems coming through there near the peak of hurricane season. Could it regain some of that warmth? Absolutely. But for now, this is good news. You'd rather it be blue than red. That's all I'm saying. Seven day change, you can see a lot of these areas have cooled over the past seven days. That is due to these tropical systems. You can literally see where Ida went. Again, they eat up a lot of those warmer waters. Overall, here is the chart for the North Atlantic. You can see it's just trending up, 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 warmer, 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 but it's mostly the North, the North Atlantic that is the warmest. So these are areas that are going to be mostly non-factors throughout the hurricane season, obviously. Now, our Nino 3.4 index, again, it's at about, it's at about negative 0.2, which it needs to be negative 0.5 to be considered a La Nina. So it's not even halfway there from the neutral line. Uh, we need to see this thing really establish itself because right now we're moving into September. You give it about a two-month lag to really start feeling the effects. Right now, as we speak, um, let's see, September, October, November. So right now, we would have, if, if it just established itself right now, as we're speaking, we would probably start feeling the effects around November 1st. If it's still like this on October 1st, we're talking about December, December 1st, January 1st. So all of a sudden, the winter... Months might not even be feeling like a La Nina in the beginning. It might be more like a neutral Enzo. So that is why it's such a huge deal when this one starts or doesn't start. I hope that makes sense. We're going to start talking about long-range stuff here in a couple days. We need to go over our fall forecast either tomorrow or is there – no, there's a, I have to do it tomorrow probably unless I do it after September 1st. I don't know. It depends what's happening in the tropics. All I know is our September forecast will be dropping on September 1st, by the way. I plan on doing the fall forecast, the final official fall forecast tomorrow. So there is a lot of exciting things coming up for you guys. Anyway, for today's confidence tab in this video, we're at a four out of six. Obviously, there's a lot more speculation going on, a lot more lower odd 
thing. So we're going to need to watch and see how this develops. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think our next hurricane will be? And Brandon Dunn said, the next hurricane could be later this week as models show on Tropical Tidbits. And they do show on Weatherbell as well because we've seen that obviously the European uh, probability model does think there will be a tropical, or sorry, a hurricane within the next three days, if not within the next four to six days. Super interesting. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons. John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Little the Pan, and Donna Carnez. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalosa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Garys, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.